Duggernaut's potential about a year and a half ago. Almost immediately. Because that's when you're looking at Bristol. Oh, the Berserker's call on the Havos. He doesn't spin this time, so he's going to get stunned up by the cast. Telekinesis perfectly timed from Suneko. Do they have enough damage to finish him off, though? Because the Fissure will land. But Cheshire Cat gets the last killing blow. Now, Vanscore, Grave is available. Hoping for some respite behind that tier 1 tower as Cheshire Cat was bearing down on him like a madman. But oh. Vanscore going to get Telekinesis up. The Berserker's Call is going to catch Havost, who is trying to run past the axe and into the support. He will succeed in doing so and trying to catch Cheshire Cat here. The magic damage from the level 2 Blade Fury, not quite enough as the Fade Bolt. Finishing off that aggressive Juggernaut, and Havost is going to be wishing he hadn't. Axe taking a little bit of damage there from the Enchant Totem, but without Aftershock, you got no additional stun. Vanscore now even getting caught out. That, that's their defensive tri lane wiped. Cool. He'll walk past him. Oh, can, he solo oh, can he solo kill him? Level 3 Fade Bolt. I think he, he can. He even steals a spin, but that, that seems slightly misplayed there from Snake. -O. He could have got a hit, then Telekinesis, then Fade Bolted. And now Omni Slash turns back around. Oh, host with the counter kill. Guys, guess where I am? Well, they're going to pop it now, seeing as they're so close to killing and the signals go out. Navi, no. Reacting is a different matter. Dendi has blink, but no RP. He's already expended that one. Stolen and power. So Nako gonna be the first to fall. A spin from Havos will finish him off. Skew over and Dendi up on the cliff. They're gonna steal it! Ivan stealing Aegis Immortal. That culling blade from Cheshire Cat does finish Dendi, but that's well worth it. Really, as PR are gonna get crushed on top of this cliff. Ivan with a cool spray. Cheshire Cat, there's no escape, man. Are they gonna leave him? Uh, apparently there is escape as Ivan turns back around. Sniper with a DD is plinking away, doing plenty of damage. Havost. Caught on the wrong side of the fissure, but it locked the sniper down long enough for Ivan to do enough damage. Dendi with the big play though, blinking in and skewering a couple of heroes on top. They haven't really advanced over 2k this game. Then Juggernaut has caught up massively with the fact that he's been empowered farming jungle camps. Cheshire Cat, three man call, but there's no follow up. Goblack might fall here to a culling blade, but he gets graved up. And the Fissure, now Denny comes in with a three-man RP over the other side of the Fissure and Havos Omni slashing them down. Zora caught on the wrong side of the river as Navi take that fight with some style. Now Dendi blinking forward, looking for the fifth man of Power Rangers, takes him down. All of a sudden oh. out of nowhere, Dendi with a three-man RP, but you got to say, Cheshire Cat started that off with no backup. No one's... Who's being used in the top lane? And stolen by the Rubik, in fact. <laughs> Not really the, the most important skill. There's nothing really good, though, you can steal from the Bristleback. You may as well steal something. Nothing to stop the TP, but Witch Doctor is going to be pursued by the Mask Commander's Juggernauts. And Do you expect Omni Slash go just try and hit? Yeah, you just try and hit him. <laughs> Omni Slash apparently not needed at all. Un until now. You don't really want to push past the Tier 2 Tower and risk your life, which... The Bristleback's doing, but he's got a second one ready and waiting. Aegis the Immortal will bring him back. There's no response from the rest of Na'Vi, though. Two heroes are bot, one hero mid. It looks like Bristle just goes down twice here. Or not. He gets trolled beforehand, apparently. Sniper turns back around to hit Havost. And Vanscore dies at mid. I was watching I that. how many different looking game from the first one. Na'Vi looking pretty much in control. And, oh, Goblet's gonna be stopped from getting his dagger yet again. Cheshire Cat's just hunting him at this point, and... And I'm before pretty sure he's gonna take it down. Culling Blade, he's got Blink Off cooldown in three seconds. If he can get some TP rotation in here. One second, he's got the heal. Goblet kept alive. He's got Blink now. He doesn't care if he dies. Cheshire Cat just slammed me into the ground. I care not for your Culling Blade. He does die, Culling Blade not used, but Cheshire Cat probably gonna give his life for this one. As it's a one for one trade, Earth Shaker for an axe, definitely not worth it for PR, especially because Blink. So the was interesting purchased. thing there is that is that Vanscore could have actually graved, and I think he thought Culling Blade goes through grave, I'm not gonna bother. Every single match, one one draw. I'll just pay attention to Cheshire Cat, he looked in a pretty unusual position, but at the same time Rubik falls. Rax here being pressured by Na'Vi as they press onto high ground. Havost doesn't have Aegis the Immortal or anything like that, so he does have to be a little bit wary of where he positions himself, position himself, but not when Dendi gets an RP onto the Sniper at the same time as Cheshire Cat blinks forward. They're going to find Sniper initially. Now Echo Slam from God Black. Catching two. The Death Wall from J4 just not making, in, making an impact at all. Bristleback chasing heroes down. The buyback from the Sniper. Havost looking for a target, but he's already used Omni Slash. Troll tries to turn things around. With a whirling axe's mischance, healing ward is placed, and 
keeping Navi pretty damn healthy. Bristleback just keeps on trucking. Yeah, and the sniper buyback is just really not that relevant. It's, it's the Axe is doing all the work on Power Rangers here, and with Axe dead, it's, there's almost nothing they can do. Well, they don't take a Rax, but they take a pretty commanding fight there as they force the stuff to buy back, kill off the troll and axe. So, really, the troll is, is feeling pretty sad now. We were talking about his. Whereas I could be going Wraith Band, Sanjin Yasha. Oh my god, Havost. Blinks into the middle of five of them. The Omni Slash somehow targeting only the Rubik. Did you run now with the bashes? But Dendi RP on two. Havost respawning in a second. He's going to turn this around and try and find some more kills. While Cheshire Cat on the back lines trying to fight into four. I. I don't know, the blink from Havos there, Dining Star. Absolutely. I mean, I I haven't seen him make a single mistake. And there's another RP on two, and he's going to skew back. Uh, the reverse RP from Suneko catches three of them now. Cheshire Cat and Dichira trying to turn things around. They've got the Echo Slam from Earthshaker. The Grave back onto the Bristleback. I don't know, could PR sustain through this? They've got another Culling Blade, but do they have someone within the threshold? Havos is dropping low. Culling Blade not in time. And Troll. One more right click does actually seal the deal. They don't take another lane of racks. They uh, basically trade three for three there. Even overall, now you've got Bristleback turning things back. Seneko might fall. In fact, he will. Now, Dichira, can you get more damage out? Because the Bristle just keeps turning his back, facing you, turning, facing, turning. And it's so difficult to believe then. Then they cross paths, possibly, but they see Havos first. They get the call on the Death Ward. Havos going to go down. He's got no backup, there's no follow through from Na'Vi, so that's 70 seconds without the Juggernaut. Any push they had planned has just been stalled completely. Yeah, they weren't expecting to run into five people. Can they kill Bristle? It's a pretty tall order, but I guess when you've got Troll Battle Trance off cooldown in seven seconds, Wish Doctor with a casket thrown out, there's no bounce. Oh, Maledict as well. They've got plenty of damage. And Navi slipping just a little bit here. I mean, they're, they're still massively ahead and probably could finish out the game soon, but this is the kind of momentum you don't want to give a team who who's on the back foot in such a big way. I, I think a, a few more costly deaths like that and PR might build up the confidence to actually make a play. You know, I don't know, get get an actual team fight or maybe get a rush on. And then they're back in the game. Did you see what the swing was like on the Juggernaut kill? Because I, I just checked the Bristle one and it was about 3,100 experience swing to PR and about 2,000 gold. I was wondering about the Jug one because overall, what's that, like a 6,000 swing? In XP at the very yeah, least. Must, must be something like that. And Havost are both in the vicinity. Navi's a little bit split and PR is all smoked up heading into the jungle. Which way do they go? Who do they walk into first? Vanscore looks like he's just dead. They in fact find the Bristleback as their initial port of call. Vanscore is you know, pretty much screwed there as Havos takes down the Rubik, so it's one for one so far, support for support. RP only catching the Witch Doctor, that's not really what you plan to do, but the Omni Slash, triple kill now for Havost. Zerk school back in, Cheshire Cat going man mode. The DD Troll is just wearing out. The Abyssal play from Havost locking down Dichira, trying to cleave through these couple of heroes. The chase continues. One bash! Havost an ultra kill, maybe even a rampage here from him. It looks like it's going that way. Taking down all five with a couple of swings from his little katana. Roshan respawning in what, 10 seconds? I gotta say that's, I mean, Navi slipped up there. They, they were split at a really bad time. They've paid 400 damage. Can Abyssal Blade someone down like the Troll Warlord before Whirling Axes becomes a real threat? Now he has to fight up against the Blade Mail Axe though, and he's losing a lot of HP in the process. Maybe a lucky bash from Dichira, not gonna happen. As uh, so Havos spins to win, Soneko now though, Telekinesis dunked into the ground by Cheshire Cat, and that was greedy as hell. Out for them to try and win a team fight. Well, oh, heading towards a 5v5 cash in. Navi's a bit more spread out yet again. Well, they find the Bristle back. Berserker's cool. Where's he getting his thrown? Because Havost and Dendi are trying to get themselves in a position where they can try and react. Havost, man fighting up against Cheshire Cat. The Witch Doctor ult and the Assassinate actually being dodged by the Omni Slash there. Goes back in for J4. Still empowered up. Malif uh, Maledict misses. And Havost just crits him down as Zara is being swiped by the Bristle back. PR looked like they were in a decent position to try and take this fight. Pincer movement splitting up, P uh, splitting up Na'Vi, but Dendi's movement was impeccable.
allowing a Vos to go and fight 1v1 against the Axe while the rest of the team has to deal with Bristleback. They just ran into the wrong heroes at the wrong times. And killing the hero that has Aegis last, it's, it's always very useful. So that, the Aegis gives no value in that fight. I mean, troll respawns, but everyone else is already dead. It looks like this is going to be the third lane of Rax here because mid is going to go down to creeps more than likely buyback status. Not relevant because GG is cool. Come back from it, empower the juggernaut, farm the jungle, then you